Hi everyone, I'm Timo Huang and I'm from uh, Linking This Research Lab and from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So today I would like to share my words related to the AP Modi cells from the NASDAQ. And um, before that, I want to uh, um, thank the brief, uh, introduction from the prior speakers, uh, Dr. Aaron Seedy, for uh, introduced the sequential uh, enzymatic digestion of the mass spectrometry imaging, also the glycosylation. So yeah, this project is actually inspired by the work uh, done by Dr. Aaron Seeley. And the title is the in situ deceivering dysregulated protein glycosylation signatures in human ovarian cancer uh, with the moldy mass imaging and the tender MS. So okay. So um, this project is about the ovarian cancer. So as we all know, the ovarian cancer is pretty uh, important to the human life. And um, uh, each year, a lot of women uh, are diagnosed with this ovarian cancer. And sadly, a lot of people uh, eventually pass away with this disease. And this is the fifth most common cause of the female cancer. And um, it has a really high mortality uh, mortality rates, uh, and because we don't have the uh, adequate uh, early detection uh, method, and also the diseases are really vague and um, always like um, occur in the really late stages. So a lot of people can be cured if they can be diagnosed in the really early stages. Um, but sadly, that um, only like thirty percent of patients can be diagnosed in the stage one, which is the early stage of the ovarian cancer, and majority are diagnosed with the stage three and stage four. And there are so many uh, reports that um, uh, indicate that the protein glycosylation, that uh, one of the po uh, protein post translational modifications that are related to uh, the ovarian cancer, and. Um, as we all know that the uh, protein glycosylation is related to a huge number of the uh, disease uh, such as cancers and Alzheimer's disease. And one of the examples is that the mucin 16, the cancer energy 125, uh, CA125, is the, uh, one of the FDA approved uh, biomarker for the ovarian cancer. And this protein has been um, uh, reported that it's highly unlinked glycosylated and O-linked glycosylated. But this uh, biomarker is, uh, is not really accurate. Uh, only like 20% um, only like of individuals who test positive with the uh, CA125 have is eventually been diagnosed with the ovarian cancer. So uh, we need to find the uh, um, other type of the uh, Cancer, bi uh, cancer biomarkers to um, improve the di uh, diagnosis of the ovarian cancer. So um, in this project, we, uh, we have the hypothesis that the protein glycosylation is related to the ovarian cancer tumor. And um, so we, we will anticipate to see the protein glycosylation showing different, differently in the uh, tumor region and uh, the adjacent normal region. So uh, the species detected in the minor tumor region and benign tumor region will be uh, different, and the massive trauma imaging can serve as a good tool to interrogate and also visualize the differences. So, um, this project is about uh, uh, glycoproteins, but there's some technical limitation about the uh, proteins because the intact glycoproteins are really hard to be directly profiled because they are really large and really hard to be analyzed. And also they, they're showing relative low abundance in uh, compared to other proteins or other species. So we are thinking that glycans and peptides might be a good uh, starting points for us to re reveal the structures and spatial localization of the glycoproteins. So in this project, we would um, use both the glycosides and um, proteas to release the glycans and also the uh, smaller sequence peptides to um, collect the uh, chemical toolbox to, uh, to, re uh, to understand the ovarian cancer. So here comes the workflow of our projects. So we collect uh, so, uh, many 
over in cancer FFP tissues. So we need to first uh, treat the, the tissues with the um, antigen retrieval step. We need to cook the, the tissue slide to unfold the proteins to make the enzyme reach to the proteins to make the digestion. So um, we also, uh, we did the sequential uh, enzymatic digestion. The first thing we use is glycosides, the pancreas F to release the unlinked glycans, so we clip the unlinked glycans from the uh, asparagine residue on the peptide backbone, and then we, uh, we, we, we did the first round of the imaging, the glycan imaging, and um, the, the second, uh, when we finish the imaging round, we, we wash away the species and do the second round of the proteus, the trypsin, to digest the uh, proteins into the smaller sequence of peptides and do the peptide imaging. Then we use the, the AP modisols uh, to, to, uh, to perform the data dependence acquisition of the, the molecules, molecules we detected with the uh, MSI to, to solve the, uh, the composition of the glycans and also the sequence of the, the peptides. And we collect the remaining tissues to do the LCM to, uh, to, um, to have the more in-depth uh, sequencing of the peptides. So here comes the uh, here comes the, some representative data that uh, we we have we we have some of the high man uh, um uh, glycans that detected in the uh, the tumor region. So in the right uh, in the right hand side is the the mass by imaging, and the left hand side is the H E Stanley circle. Uh, the, the the red circle means the tumor region on the tissue. So we found that high mannose glycans uh, majority localized in the tumor region, which is inconsistent with the, our previous report with our mass model for the ovarian cancer. When we take a closer look the, um, of one of the high mannose glycan, uh, 1257, uh, we, we see the upregulation of, of the uh, this MOZ in the tumor region compared to the normal region. Um, we, we see the, the dis, uh, downregulation in the uh, non-tumor region, and also even with these single molecules, we can uh, we can have the really good ROC curve with the AUC around uh, zero point nine, but. Um, only knowing the uh, uh, MOZ is not enough to identify the molecules um, because we ultimately we want to know what species it, uh, is in this uh, MOZ. So we, we select a region of, um, of the tissue to perform the um, tissue MS2 to profile, uh, uh, to, to solve the, uh, the guidance composition of the, these molecules. So we, uh, we select a, a region of the tissue and we basically use the AP modisols uh, as a continuous ionization source to keep injecting the ions into the OB trap to do the uh, data dependent acquisition of, um, of the molecules. And this is what uh, the, the MS2 spec spectrum of this uh, MOZ. So as you can see, we can clearly see the uh, glycan composition of these molecules, so we can uh, be really sure that we uh, comp uh, confidently identify the, uh, this glycan, the, uh, this high mass glycan. And this is another example. So uh, we observed the uh, 1419.4, this species, uh, majority localized in the tumor region. And the quantification results show that uh, this species are uh, upregulated in the tumor region and uh, downregulated in the normal region. And this single species can also serve as a good biomarker to differentiate these two different regions with the good ROC curve with the AOC around uh, 0 0.93. So we use this same approach, uh, we select the region on the tumor region, uh, uh, we, we select a, a, tu <coughs> a, a, a tumor region to use uh, um, AP MOD data dependent acquisition to character, uh, characterize this uh, MOZ and we can uh, see the glycan composition can be easily solved and we can see each, uh, uh, each uh, glycan residue. So, uh, we also performed the, the peptide imaging 
So uh, we apply the tryp trypsin to digest the, the proteins into the smaller peptide sequence, and we find uh, several different uh, peptide sequence also majority localized in the tumor region, um, and they are downregulated in the non-tumor region. And we use the uh, LCM SMS uh, result to uh, putatively uh, identify these peptides. So. Um, so in the future, we, we, we will we use the, the same approach to uh, on tissue uh, DD, uh, data dependent acquisition to profile those peptide signals. So in a summary, uh, we, we also uh, did the sequential enzymatic digestion to release uh, unlinked glycans and triptych peptides. And we can uh, collect those species serve as a, a toolbox to uh, potentially diagnose the uh, minor region and the benign region on the ovarian cancer tumor tissues. And on tissue, uh, AP Modi data dependence acquisition um, is possible and it can help us to confidently uh, characterize the glycan uh, compositions and also the peptide sequence. And by combine, combining both the LCMS uh, results and AP Modi data dependent acquisition results, we can uh, have a more accurate uh, identification of the species we detected in the uh, MSI, uh, which is uh, what we want to use because previously uh, uh, we, we, um, we usually just use the accurate mass matching uh, um, with the LCMSMS result. So uh, this is a good thing that we, uh, we can improve in the future. So um, for the acknowledgement, uh, I would like to acknowledge um, Dr. Lee for always support and uh, the co co collaborator Dr. Manish Pataker and, and uh, several mem uh, lab members in our lab. And I would like to especially uh, acknowledge a mass tech for the support. Uh, Benka, Constantine, and Eugene, and, and also Peter for, for the invitation. And I have another poster presentation about a system biology to, um, the, the title is the, uh, it's on Thursday morning, and it's deciphering age-dependent global proteome changes in the left curtain end. And uh, it's about understanding the biomerization, and welcome to join us. Yep, so, uh, thanks everyone for listening. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Timo. Uh, any questions? Okay. So I have a very quick question. So how comparable your LCMS peak numbers with the Malvi saga for peak number for the peptide? As far as the coverage or numbers goes? Uh, so, uh, the pin number? The pig numbers, I'll say, for pig your numbers. digestion, right? So you get from multi side and get from LCMS side. How yeah. many, or how comparable they are? So usually we will see that like, lower number of the uh, peptide pigs in the, uh, the multi uh, because it lack of the, the separation. So LCMSMS usually will have the higher number of the pigs. Yeah. 